Hi everybody, I'm Bob Schneider. Welcome to the Song Club. I knew it was a bad idea to meet you here, my dear. All right, here we are in the Song Club. It's number 75, and I'm glad to be here with everybody, whoever you may be, wherever you may be in the world. And uh, you're probably like, why is he not looking into the camera? It's because, trust me when I say this, I'm doing a lot of things. Uh, have I turned into a partial robot? Yeah. Am I like... And when I say partial, do I mean like 98% robot, 2% humanoid being? Pretty much. I mean, at this point, I'm not really sure what the exact percentage is now that I've been on the computer for as long as I have. But I, if I was to hesitate, if I was to take a gander... <laughs> How about that breathing? If I was to take a gander, um, I would say probably 98%. He, uh, mechanical man, 2%. Homo sapien. And when I say homo sapien, I mean mostly. Probably less sapien. Um, anyways, I want to, now that you guys are here, I want to thank my Patreon people. Yay, Patreon people. I, I had I have a studio audience, but I've muted them for the show because here, here's what I want to do today. I want to get right into the nitty gritty of what it is to write songs and be creative because there's a lot of you people that are listening going, how does he do it? How does he, week after week, come up with what we in the business call the goods? Now, that's a good question, and I'm here to answer it, folks. I've been stalling. I've been stalling for 75 hours worth of podcasts. But this is the show where we're going to get into the nitty-gritty. I'm going to tell you the secrets. Dude, I feel like I'm doing an impression of Clint Wells. I don't know if you've listened to my other podcast. I'm okay. You're okay. But in that podcast... um, In that pod... Cast. I'm trying to see if I can do a Scottish accent. In that podcast, I'm not sure what accent that is, but I like it. In that podcast, Clint Wales talks like the way I've been talking so far in this episode. Because obviously I've adopted his way of talking as sort of the official like podcast way of speaking. And my way of speaking, which is... A pretty cool way of speaking, I have to admit. If I, you know, if I'm going to be 100% honest, I'm usually there's going to be a lot of percentages. I hope you brought some kind of abacus or a slide rule or something or a Texas Instruments calculator, something like that, because there's going to be a lot of math because. You can't write songs if you if you don't if you're not a master mathematician, you're not gonna write a good song. Do you think that Paul McCartney didn't know how to do advanced trigonometry? If you th the answer is I'm not even sure what you just asked, then don't even pick up a pen and paper. Don't even pick up a pen and paper and try to write anything. Because if you don't know how to do advanced trigonometry, I'm not even sure if that's a thing. I just know I can do it. Now, have I ever been tested on the subject? Hell no. I stopped doing math early in my life. I went to a British school. That's right. Did he stutter? Wait a second. I think I heard him say he went to a British school. Yeah. Yeah. I went to a British school in ninth and 10th grade because I was living in Germany at the time. And they didn't have no American schools for someone of my age where I lived. And so my choices were either went to a British school, um, which was nearby, or I stayed in a dorm Monday through Friday and came home on the weekends. And the dorm where I would have gone to school, 
very similar to the dorm that was in that movie by Sean Penn called Bad Boys. Um, basically, uh, sort of like a house of detention light. Like, just a bunch of thugs. And I was like, I don't want to go there, because I'm not thuggish. Do I have thuggish good looks? You be the judge. But I'm not a thug, per se. So I didn't want to go there. So I, I ended up going to this British school. And turns out British school, which sounds really cool. Like, I thought, oh, this will be like the BBC. I'll go there, and there'll be a bunch of, like, hmm... Do you know the square root of my... Do you know the square root of 345? I'm the British lad. You seem like a nice gentleman. What is your name? Oh, my name is Bob, and I'm in ninth grade. Oh, that's toodaloo. Let's share us ourselves a cup of... A cup of tea. And let's talk about the ancient lost civilizations and philosophy and art. So I thought that's what it was going to be, like, basically BBC on PBS. But turns out that that school was very similar to the American school in that it was a military school in, in that all the parents of these guys that went to school and girls, not that I ever talked to any girls, but the kids who went to the school, their parents were... Enlisted military. Now, I don't know if you know a lot about enlisted military, but it's not the cream of the crop. Enlisted military is not the cream of the crop. Now, there are some officers that join the military, and they're kind of smart. You know, they go to West Point and stuff like that. And they're pretty smart. They got to go through, you know, they got to they become an, uh, an officer, uh, military officer. So that takes a little, but to become an enlisted soldier, all you have to do is drag your skinny ass down to the recruiting station and sign some papers. And then they're like, you got a job, son. And then you're like, well, I had to get this job because it's either jail or job in the military. So anyways, those mighty men of mighty men of science as I like to call them. Now, are they heroes? Yeah. I mean, do they got to go to like war and stuff like that? Are they doing the shittiest job in the world for all of us? Yes. Do I support the troops? Yeah. Don't come at me with no, oh, he's not supporting the troops. I get what they do, but I'm just telling you what it is because I live there, son. Uh, so I know what's going on. And what's going on is if you enlist in the military, you ain't got a lot of options. It's low, low on the food chain for job options. So anyway, so those uh, sage philosophers and uh, men of science and academia, they... Uh, knock up the first person they uh, come in contact with and then their offspring, their, uh, that brood that they push into the world with their, uh, you know, with their combined genetics. That's who I'm going to school with. Either the American version or the British version. And uh, the British version wasn't any, like, it was just like the American version, a bunch of dumb dumbs. So I go down there, and I'm expecting the BBC, and what I got was, <laughs> oh, yank, oi, 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 it's a yank. Let's kick his ass. Oi, yank. I yank. I wanka. I, oi. So that's who's going to school there. Now, even in that school of dumb, dumb kids, there was even a lower caste in that school when I went to school there, which would have been, I guess, 79 is when I was in ninth grade. I think so. And those were the punks. Now, punks nowadays are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a punk haircut. I'm going to listen to punk music, and I'm going to call myself a punk. In those days, the guys 
who were punks in British school where I went to school, those were real punks. And now what punks were, punks were just basically like the lowest of the low. So you've got the dummies that are make up most of the school and then you've got the dumbest of the dummies and they were the punks. And these kids, all they did was like huff glue drink because in Germany the drinking age is 13 so every all everybody's drinking uh, at that age pushing like safety pins through their cheeks and shit like that anyways those guys were complete outcasts their whole thing was like I gotta get through 10th grade oi go get through 10th grade oi oi yank I'll go get through 10th grade and I'm gonna go on the dole what do you mean Oh, yeah, I'll get on the dole. And what are you going to do? I'll just sit around all day in the flat and then, uh, you know, have a few points. And then go out, have a few points, go watch the game and fucking kick some ass. All these guys did was get drunk, get in fights. They were like, would hang out in mobs and just like go to these clubs and like mosh dance. But it was really just controlled fighting. All they did was get drunk and fight. So now... Who does your boy end up hanging out with? Uh, these guys, these punks. Because I was outcast, they were outcast, so we just kind of got grouped together. So I was hanging out with these guys. Now, they scared the fuck out of me. But for whatever reason, they kind of took me in and kind of took me under their wing and let me hang out with them, which also meant that nobody really fucked with me because I'm not a fighter kind of guy at all. And, uh, yeah, so I was just hanging out with these punks in British school and went, was there for two years. Now, I'm taking all O-level classes, which are, like, where the nerds and the smart kids, those are the classes they take. And then if you're not smart, you take CSE classes, which is what the normal to the dumb take, which is most of the school. So I'm kind of in these honor roll classes and these punks of course are just failing all their classes they're just trying to get through 10th grade and then that's it they're on an unemployment and for for the rest of their short-lived lives they're, they're not gonna even live that long anyways that's why i was going to school with there was a reason why i brought that up and i can't remember what it is now because that's the way it is that's the way it is i can't remember shit but anyways we're at the song club and who needs to remember anything Oh, I think I was talking about math and how you need to uh, know how to do math. So that's what it is. Now I've remembered it. So like I said, I was taking uh, O-level maths is what they called it in British school. Now O-level maths in British school is some advanced math because your boy was pretty good at math. And what I found out was after I got my, I think I got an A in O-level maths. I took the O-levels in 10th grade. And then if you pass all your O-levels, then you get to take A-level classes, which is 11th and 12th grade, and then you go to university. But what I found out was those O-levels are so advanced that I never had to take math again. Even in college, I could get my Master of Fine Arts, which was what I was trying to get, and never take another math course. So the last time your boy took a math class was in 10th grade in British school. Yank. Wanka. All right. So let's, with that in mind, we've got a very special song club, by the way, this week. Oh, there it is. Anyways, we have a very special, what, what is going on here? Why is it all, is there like a weird, who knows, thing going on in this? Who knows? Anyways, sorry about that. I was, I was looking at my screen. My screen looks like an old-timey television. Hopefully that's not what's happening on YouTube. Oh, by the way, I'm on YouTube. If you're listening to this as a podcast, I'm on YouTube. Go there, subscribe. Get that whatever. YouTube thing, who cares? What I was saying is this is a special song club because all the songs this month were written this month. I usually I have like four songs that I wrote this month and then some oldies. But this month was a very productive month. And I wrote six songs and two versions of two different songs. So that comes in at eight, eight songs. So let's get to it. 
um, and listen to the first song. This one's called Dead and Dying. It's actually a co-write that I did with Braden Barnhill. Braden Barnhill. Remember that name. He's an up-and-coming young man in the in the singer-songwriter world. I think he's country, leaning country, or maybe just pure country. I don't know. But he came over the other day, and we wrote this song, and uh, I like it. And uh, now, did I write most of the lyrics? I might have. It doesn't matter. Uh, the thing I like about it is that it sort of hints at uh, global warming, which, you know, as you know, the country music market, they're really into the global warming. And so that really... Uh, that really makes me feel good. Uh, that really fills me with glee that we have a nice little song here. But it doesn't, it doesn't like, it just kind of, it, it talks about polar bears at the beginning um, of the song. Now, we started writing this song. Braden came up with this really sad sort of melancholy music. And I was like, oh, this sounds like unrequited love song music, which is my favorite kind of song. And I was like, what's what's sort of a sad image? And then all of a sudden I, I remember seeing like a polar bear swimming in the water and the idea of just like being in the ocean and swimming. And I guess polar bears can swim for like a day or two in the ocean. But eventually they're going to have to sleep. And then if you're in the ocean and you fall asleep, you just die, I guess. So this image of this polar bear swimming and swimming, looking for a piece of ice or something that I guess now is melted. So I guess they're drowning or whatever. Just that's such a beautiful image in my head. And I was like, oh, that's what this song's about. So anyways, that's how the song starts. Uh, at first, the lyric was polar bear, but I took it out. Because then I like, well, you'll see. I just mentioned bears swimming in the ocean. Which is like, what? Bear swimming in the ocean? And then you got to kind of put it together and maybe you'll figure out that it's a polar bear. But I like the idea of a brown bear swimming in the ocean too. That makes it even kind of cooler. Anyways, let's listen to the song. Let's, why don't, you know, you don't want to hear me jamming up the pipes with my bullshit. All right, let's check it out since we're in the ocean, anyways, on this little boat. Here we go. Dead and dying. That's loud. Do we need. Do we need to have it that loud? Here we go. That's better. I heard that there's bears. Still too loud. Drowning in the sea. Looking for some land. Where land once used to be. I saw it on TV. So yeah, so that's that song. And then, you know, I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool. But then I did another version of it, basically for the band to play. Um, You know, so it's got drums and stuff in it. And I kind of like that first version better. But let's check out the second version because you're going to get both. And then you can play whichever one you like or play them both. So here's the second version. Oh, that's not the right song. That's a different song. Oh, man, what is wrong with me? Oh, that's what's going on. Here it is. Um, I'll fix all this in post. Don't even worry about it. All right, so here's the other one. This is the second version. So we'll just join it. We'll join this song when it's kind of on the second verse here, kind of the same spot. Here we go. Looking for somebody. It's kind of a nice version. You're not in love with me. 
this is the kind of version you can play if you're like on a cross country trip across India. Let's say you've got like 45 hours to kill. Oh, that melodica, son. Oh, that melodica is so good. Nothing fills me with joy like the sound of a beautiful melodica solo. And who's playing that solo? You know it's me. I mean, I played everything in I play everything there. But y'all know that now. You know what's going on. I don't need to tell you anything anymore. Because you guys know it all now. Which is cool. I think it's good that you guys know it all. So yeah, so that's two of the eight songs. You get two versions of one song, which is kind of cool, I think. Anyways, it puts you in what we call the expert club. Because a lot of people, you know, that are familiar with me, with Bob Schneider, aren't really familiar. The only people that really are familiar are you guys, the Patreons, the casual podcast listeners, the song club folks. You guys in the song club, you know more than anybody in the world about me, besides me and, you know. You guys probably know more about me than my parents which is pretty amazing. But anyways. But nobody loves me as much as my mom. So that's kind of cool. And nobody loves my mom more than me. Except for maybe my sister. So yeah. So it's the song club. And it's June. And it's 2023. Unless you're in the future. Which you might be. I think most people are going to be listening to this in the future. There's only a few people listening to it now. Which is fine. But in the future, there'll be lots of people listening to it. Hundreds of thousands, millions, maybe. They'll be like, oh. When he was alive, Bob Schneider was loved by only a few. But now, now that we've had a look at his body of work and what he's done, now the whole world has come to love him for, for the amazing amount of creativity and output that he, that he did during his lifetime. Blah, blah, blah. By the way, that's how all crazy people think. All insane people think that way. That, oh, I'm just misunderstood. And then one day people will understand me and uh, and then I'll, I'll be this great person. It's just that people don't get me now. Uh, that's the only reason. But it's just because they're insane. Now, am I insane? I don't think I'm insane. Do I have visions of grandeur? Oh, you know I do. But here, look, I told you guys I was going to tell you the secret of writing songs, and I have been. And I'm going to continue to do it. This podcast is just going to be chock full of the vital shit. Here's the big, biggest piece of the puzzle when it comes to making any kind of art. I don't care if it's songwriting or dance or writing a play or a movie script or acting or any, any of the creative arts or any other thing in the world. If you think you're really good at it, you're going to do it. And to make music, you got to think that your shit is the best. So... I don't give a fuck what anybody tells you because they're going to lie to you and bullshit you and say, well, you know, I'm just doing my best, you know. No. Somewhere deep down, they think that they're the shit. And that's why they do what they do. And if you don't have that, you're not going to do it. The people that don't make music or don't make art or don't choreograph ballet or write uh, TV crime dramas... The only reason they don't do it is because they all they're all of the people in the world say, I can't do that. The only reason I don't write novels, I tell myself, I can't do it. I tell myself I'm a bad actor because I am a bad actor. And th therefore, I don't do any acting. And I have done some. And every time I do it, the director's like, how come you're so bad? I'm like, I don't know. It's genetic. My dad's not a good actor. I'm not a good actor. Maybe my son will be. I don't know. I have, I have. I would love for him to be, or my daughter. I think she's actually a, an amazing actress. So hopefully, hopefully, genetically, she's broken the chain. 
Let's listen to another song. Let's listen to that one that I played you a second ago that I thought was the right song, Dead and Dying, but it's so similar. It's called Dreaming and Drifting Away. I thought it was the same song, but it wasn't. Here's another brand new song here on the Song Club. It's called Dreaming and Drifting Away. Now, I will tell you this. This is the second version of this song, but I didn't like the first version enough to give it to you guys. So you're only getting one version of this. Where's the other one? I like both versions, and therefore you're getting both. Burn down the house around me while I sleep. How does it feel? You know, you can really can do anything when you're writing a song. All you have to really do, all you have to really do is just make it rhyme. If you make it rhyme, you're pretty much 100% of the way there. Now, it does help if, you know, it does help if the lyrics are interesting. But a lot of people don't seem to give a fuck about that, I've noticed, just by listening to most music. A lot of people are like, yeah. It rhymes. That's fine. Anyways, I would suggest if you're going to write songs, try to make the lyrics not just rhyme, but also a little bit interesting. Now, were the lyrics in that last song interesting? Very much so. Um, what else? We're about halfway through. We're really flying through this because you know why? Because I'm. It's because it's about information. Normally, I'm talking about this and that. No, this time you guys. Uh, this might as well be, I'm just going to submit this podcast to the people that do master class and say, hey, here, here it is. Here's your master class in songwriting. Song Club 75. And then they'll be like, you're right. We've had other people give the master class, but this is the one that's probably the definitive one. So we're going to burn all the other ones. We're going to make a pile of all the master classes. In fact, you know what? We're just not even going to do any other master classes. Scorsese's master class on filmmaking, fuck that. It goes on the pile. Burn. Scorsese's like, why? Why did you burn it? Incredible Scorsese impression, by the way. And they'll be like, well, Bob Schneider, Song Club 85 or 75, whatever the fuck number, doesn't matter. Yeah, he wrote the definitive... Uh, the manifesto and creativity and what it is. And so now we've just decided to burn all everything. And he's like, but I know, but it's not even about film. My shit's about film. And they're like, well, sorry, Scorsese or Marty or whatever they call him. Sorry, buddy. There's a new king in town and his name is Beach Nides. And so Ron Howard, he won't care. Like Ron Howard's got so much dough. Ron Howard has been making money since he was a child. He was four years old. He was on the Andy Griffith show just making that bank. He had the biggest piggy bank in his school. Then he went from that to being in American Graffiti and then Happy Days. Oh, can you imagine how much money he was making on that show? Then just started directing the hits, boy. 
And he's never stopped. And he's like 95 now, and he's still making movies. But yeah, his master class gone. But he'll be like, I don't care. Because he'll probably watch this and go, yeah, well, it makes sense to me because he's smart. Marnie, on the other hand, he likes to, you know, I need the world to know how to make good movies because he's like, fuck Marvel. Fuck Marvel. I'm Marty Scorsese. Fuck Marvel. I'm like, well, those... I hate to say it, Marty, but some of those Marvel movies are actually even better than some of your... He's a little hit or miss lately. I know. I love Martin Scorsese. He's one of my favorite directors of all time. But come on, dude. Get it together, son. There's a weird thing about people who just kind of... I mean, I'm going to be one of them. Don't get me wrong. I'm including myself in this club that I'm about to present to you, this idea that I'm about to present, which is like people where shit comes easy and then they just, they don't do a lot of work uh, in terms of their presentation. Presentation, that's how you say that word. Um, and then as they get older, they're like less good at that. But instead of like putting more work into it, they're just like, no, I'll just do what I've always done. And then it just gets worse and worse. Now, that's not true about my songwriting, but it is probably true about like this kind of stuff. Who knows? I don't know. Am I getting better or worse? You guys are like, you're definitely getting worse. But am I? No, I'm getting better, of course. Again, that's what crazy people say. Crazy people think they're getting better, and they're not. Insane people are getting worse, and they're like getting a little worse. I better put a little more, more work into it. Man, I've got like three screens and I've got the tiniest little cursor in the world. And it's just, where's the cursor? Oh, there it is. After five minutes of looking around for it. Let's listen to another song because we are in the song club. And we're looking at all these songs that I wrote. Me. B. Schnee. In the month of uh, May. In the year 2023. And there were some good songs. This is a new one. It's called Around Town. As I was writing this song, I was like, this is like an old song. This is like a song that would have been written in 1955. But I kind of like it. It kind of reminds me of The Kinks. Like, I feel like this is a song The Kinks would have written in 1967. Let's check it out. It's called Around Town. I was going to call it Little Mama Chicken Sauce. Because I'd use that lyric in the second verse. Let's listen to it and see if we can spot Around Town, which is the title, and then also Little Mama Chicken Sauce. Oh, I like that. I went around town looking for something to throw around. I went around town looking for something to throw around. I went around town looking for something to throw around. I put my pants on, but they wouldn't look too tight. I put my pants on, but they kept putting up a fight. I took the legs and Vaseline. I can't remember my baby's name, so I call her Little Mama Chicken Sauce. Now, when I started writing that song, did I think that I was going to write that lyric? Hell no. But when I wrote it, I was like, well, that's the best lyric in the whole song. And that's kind of what convinced me to just go, well, I guess this is a song now. Because once, once I wrote that line, I'm like, well, I don't want to not sing that line. I don't want to not play a show and be able to sing that line to people. And that's how it works when you're writing songs. Again, here we are. I'm just, here's what I'm doing. I'm the magician. And you've been watching the show for a while. You're on Broadway. 
or no, Broadway. You're in Vegas. You've seen the show. You've seen the magician put his head in the tiger's mouth. That's what I've been doing for 25 years. Putting my head in nightly in the tiger's mouth. Sawing the lady in half, catching the bullet in my teeth. And you're like, how the fuck does he do this? And here we are. And I'm saying, come with me backstage. Come with me. And I'm going to show you the hidden compartment. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing this show. I'm, I'm showing you the hidden compartment. And the hidden compartment is you're writing something, and then all of a sudden you write, I can't remember my baby's name, so I call her Little Mama Chicken Sauce. And then you go, what? Because that's all. That's the minute you realize, oh, that's what this song is. This song is that. Now, some of you might go, well, what is that, Bobby? And here's where I'm about to open up that trap door and show you what I'm talking about. Don't ask. Don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> there's some military guys that are like freaking out right now. What? What's he talking about? I'm not talking about like if you're gay in the military, don't tell, don't ask. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. Don't ask. Oh, what does that mean? I don't give a fuck. It just, is it cool? Yeah. Do I need to know what it means? No. I don't know what half of this shit means. I just write it down because it's cool. And then sometimes I'll figure it out later. Sometimes it'll be weeks later. Sometimes years later, I'll be like, oh, that's what that is. Or I'll read something and I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's in that song. How did I know that? Because I was passing by and the radio was on in a store in my brain that's sucking up everything all the time, heard that little bit of information, tucked it away, and then used it in a song later. And I didn't even know I knew that. It's just there, because it's just all the information that you're sucking up all the time, and all of creativity comes from that vast ocean of information that you're, you're not consciously aware of. You can't be, it's too much stuff. You can only be aware of like two, thing, two things, like this, like, mm, sweet, mm, cold. That's all, but there's 100,000 things about this. Mm, it's a delicious ice cream cone. And it's made out of billions of little colors, I guess. I don't know. I only know two things, sweet, cold. Mm. So, yeah, consciously I know sweet, cold, but subconsciously I know 100,000 things about that snow cone. And it comes out when I write a song. And again, you're welcome. And the songwriters here are like, well, I'm just going to use this information to go make billions of dollars. Yeah. Just remember, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com and subscribe today and give me some of that billions of dollars that, from songwriting. All right. Here's a new song. It's called The Mountain. I like all these songs that I wrote this month. I really do. They're some of the most... They're definitely weirder than normal songs, which I like. I like avant-garde weird shit. I, that's all I listen to, really. I've been listening to a band called Tears From Your Eyes out of Brooklyn. And they're just weird. And uh, I love it. Anyways, I've been writing some stuff that's not as weird as Tears From Your Eyes. But let's listen to this song. It's called The Mountain. And it's... I like it. It's pretty good. This isn't it, by the way. This is just some chicks that are hanging out over here. Hey, shh. Yeah. Come on. I climb the mountain with these tears in my head. Whoa. I climb the mountain with these tears in my head. Yeah, yeah. I climb the mountain with these tears in my head. Uh -huh. I build the Eyes made of gold. I push the sword into the mountains. 
black fold I held you baby with these eyes made of steel I'm pretty sure that none of this is real I climbed the motherfucking mountain. Oh, he climbed that mountain, son. He didn't climb that mountain. Where's Bobby? He climbed the mountain. Oh, he did? Yeah, he climbed the mountain. But why? Oh, he had tears in his eyes. Oh, it looks like I'm talking to Houston again. Yeah, I kind of am in tears. Mm, nice. So anyways, uh, Houston, I got to do this podcast, so I'll see you in a few, in a few weeks at the Monkey Dot. Uh anyways, here we are. We're man, we're we're get we're we're winding it down again. How how fun has this been? How it's gone quickly. It's it's been an incredible learning experience if you're it doesn't matter who you are, what you do. Just incorporate this in your life and have success. And then you're welcome. Uh, So this next song I wrote, uh, it's called The Most Interesting People on Earth Got Old and Died. Now, this is a deal where I'm driving around one day and this idea pops into my head and I just start singing it. The Most Interesting People on Earth Got Old and Died. I'm like, oh, that's a song. And so I record it into my phone and then send myself an email with that little recording. And then I get home, and I'm like, okay, this is my song this week, and then I write it. Now, that happens so rarely. Most of the time, I just sit down and write whatever comes into my mind. But every once in a while, I'm given a gift, an idea, whatever. And then I think I feel like it used to happen more often. Back in the day, before I had a phone even that could record, I I had a pad of paper that I would keep in my butt pocket but I never used it because you'd have an idea but you'd forget that you had butt pocket paper and uh, and you'd have an idea and then it would just go away and then for a while there I was doing a thing where I would call my house and sing into the phone and then leave it on my answering machine I did that for years in the 90s uh, when I would have a song idea But now I've got my phone, and I can just record any idea. So that's what happened with this next song. So I record the song. I like it. It's kind of arty, which I like. I like arty songs. And then I play it for my wife, and she says, I'm going to have to get a job now. I'm like, what? She's like, I'm going to have to get a job now because nobody's going to like this song, and it's over. You don't know how to write anymore. And I'm like, thanks. Thanks for the support, lady. My, my wife, thank you for the support. Anyways, I go down to the Saxon Pub <laughs> where, you know, the connoisseurs are, the connoisseurs of art. They, uh, you know, they're holding everything I do up to the microscope. That's not true. They like everything I do. Anyways, I played the song. It's been playing it for the last two weeks. Huge hit. People like it. People like it. Anyways, I think my wife didn't like it because it's not about her. A lot of songs I write are about our relationship or, you know, any, of course, any love song I wrote wrote in the last 10 years is about her, of course. But every once in a while I write a song that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with her. Maybe it has something to do with the world or maybe it has something to do with my relationship in the world. And my relationship with the world at this point is I'm getting older. I'm in my late 30s. And when I say late 30s, I mean they've invented a new form of light bulb 
that doesn't have to be changed but every 10 years. Anyways, um, let's listen to the song. It's called The Most Interesting People on Earth. And uh, like I said, I like it. I like it. My wife didn't like it. Let's see if you guys like it. Here we go. Already, what, what's wrong with that? The most interesting people on earth got old and died. I like it. The most interesting people on earth got old and died. Okay, okay. Jack Nicholson died. Bob Dylan died. David Bowie died. Hal Holbrook died. Harry Belafonte died. Sergio Morricone died. Steven Spielberg died. The most interesting people on earth got old and died. The most interesting people on earth got old and died. Gloria Swanson died. The kid in that leukemia had died. The boy in the bubble died. Mikey, who liked Life Cereal, died. Michael Jordan died. He just died. I don't know how he died, but he just died. I saw it on the news. Betty Crocker died. Chef Boyardee died. The Kool-Aid man died. All of England died over a hundred years ago. Now it's a nation of ghosts weaving their way in and out of each glorious day. Their wives and daughters and husbands banning hate speech and other non-productive type attitudes hammering away at the beans and the blood sausages, the kidney pies, the diarrhea. So much diarrhea. Good God. My mom died. My old mom. The one I grew up with. Not my mom that's old now. The young one. I died. I died right after I walked into the room and announced that I would be running for president. Yeah, the one who had never run for anything, that one was dead. That person was dead forever. The one who had run from everything, oh, he was still alive, I guess. There you go. The most interesting people on earth got old and died. So, yeah. Wife didn't wasn't crazy about it. She's not crazy about a lot of things. You know, that's part of being in a relationship for a while is after a while you're like, mm, you're over it. And I get it, but that's still not cool. Like, it's a good song. Anyways, that's almost all the songs for this month. Uh, man, I was like looking at my screen and it was like doing some weird shit. That's why if you if you're watching on this on YouTube and you uh, saw me looking over, it's because my computer monitor that I got from a company that I won't say the name of but it's close to Austin and uh, it was fucking up and then I returned it and they sent me a new one and then the new one is doing the same shit and it looked like there were some problems it looked like an old screen TV from the 90s and then when I dragged the thing over <laughs> by the way this part is not necessarily about writing songs but maybe it is Maybe this is sort of the real shit. Who knows? All right, I'm going to stop talking about my computer monitor because we're just about done here. I've got one more song. It's called Drake's New Girlfriend. And yes, there's two versions of this. There's a kind of a Bob Schneider funk version, which is nice. But then I also, when I wrote the song, or when I came up with the idea for it, it was more of like a country vibe. And so, and I like that version too. Now, these are two completely different versions. I like them both. So you get them both. And that's your eight songs. By the way, is eight songs a month too many? Because I think it might be. Like if somebody sent me eight songs a month, I'd be like, I'm cool with four. Are you guys cool with four? Let me know. Because maybe eight songs is too many. I don't know. I know the hardcores are me like, oh no, keep sending eight songs a month. But I, I feel like it's too many. Now, do m most normal people like Sting? Can he write eight songs a month? Probably. Does he do it? Hell fucking no. Has Sting sent out 560 songs over the course of the last four years? Hell fucking no. He hasn't, sent, he hasn't put out one album. Now, does that make me better than Sting? I mean, I'm not saying it makes me better than Sting. Sting's one of the best. He's so good. The Police. Have you ever listened to that band? He's one of the best. All I'm saying is this. I'm giving you guys a lot. Maybe I'm giving you too much. Sometimes when you give people too much, they're like, mm, 
I don't know now. But if you give them just a little, like if you give somebody like a, a cracker once every three days, they're going to be like, God damn, this cracker's fucking on fire. If you give somebody a cracker every three days, they're going to be like, damn, this is a good cracker. Do you got any water? Juice maybe? Or a beef schnitzel? But if you give somebody like, five boxes of crackers every couple minutes after a while they're gonna be like uh, i don't know about this cracker situation i mean i like crackers but these crackers aren't you know they're a little salty or whatever but i'm telling you you give somebody one cracker every three days holy shit son You've never tasted a cracker as delicious as that. So maybe that's what it is with Sting. You know, he gives people a cracker every three days, and then like, damn, this is a good cracker. Meanwhile, I'm giving people boxes of crackers willy-nilly. So I don't know. You guys got to let me know. Somehow, I, I, I used to have some email address that I, I said, I mentioned, and then I never check it. And I guess you can, like, let me know at Patreon and send me messages there. But I check that about once a year. Now, should my manager be checking that every day? He should be. Does he? No. I don't know when he checks it. Uh, probably not very often. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe at a show. Let me know. Let me know if, if, uh, if I'm giving you guys too many crackers. All right. Let's listen to these two songs. Let's listen to the country version. So this is the original version of the song when I came up with the idea. Let's listen to a little bit. This is the country version of Drake's new girlfriend. Let's see if we like it. Oh, there we go. Oh, is this Kenny Loggins? Is my boy making that Kenny Loggins jam? Is it Caddyshack? She gonna get on a big jet plane. If she gonna get on a big jet plane, leave me alone again. And I'll be the king of this shit sucks. Kenny Loggins? Yeah, I'll be the king of this shit sucks. Caddyshack? So that's the Kenny Loggins version. That definitely, to me, sounds like some straight up, like me trying to write, well, then done to Caddyshack, or whatever that song, fucking song is. All right, so anyway, so I was like, ah, let me do a better version of this. And then, so then I wrote this version, which is like, yeah, this is better. All right, this is the song we're going out on. So, anyways, it's been a oh yeah, like Penn and Teller. All right, anyways, it's been fun hanging out with you guys this month at the Song Club. Uh, join Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com today and get all these songs and all the other songs and uh, other stuff. Till next, till next month, y'all take care. She gon' get on that jet plane. the end.